All right, today we're going to start our last unit of the year, which is a study of limits and continuity of functions. So first we're going to start out by giving an informal definition of continuity. Function is continuous if you don't have to lift your pencil to trace it from left to right. There are three types of discontinuities in a function f of x at x equals a that we're going to talk about. The first is called a jump discontinuity. And an example of a jump discontinuity would be a function that looks like this. Where there is a jump from one y value to a second y value. In that case, the limit from the left will not equal the limit from the right for the function. A second type of discontinuity is called an infinite discontinuity. That gets its name because the function approaches infinite values as we get very, very close to A. The function can either approach a positive infinite value or a negative infinite value as we get close to A, depending upon which side you approach from. The third type of discontinuity is called a removable dis discontinuity. In this case, the limit as x approaches a exists, but that limit may be different from the function value. It's called a removable discontinuity because changing one function value, f of a, would make the function continuous at that point. In other words, we can just fill in that open circle. All right, in example one, we're going to sketch a function g of x and g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2. In order to graph this function, you might observe that if we were to make a table of values, it would be impossible to plug in the number 2. Let's make a table of values and let's include some values that will help us plot some points and then also we'll include some values that are very, very close to 2 to get an idea about what's happening in the function as we get close to x equals 2. All right, so uh, if x is, for instance, uh, 1, then f of x will be 1 over 1 minus 2 or negative 1. So we can plot the point 1 comma negative 1. Uh, if x is 0, the y value will be negative 1 half. So we can plot that point. If x is negative 1, that's going to give us a y value of negative 1 third. At this point, we might be getting an idea that as we continue to move to the left, the y values will get closer and closer to 0. And so that'll indicate an asymptote in the graph as we get to its left end. Let's see what happens when we get very, very close to 2. Uh, for instance, let's look at x equals 1.5. If we plug in 1.5 for x, the y value is 1 over negative 1 half, which is negative 2. If we plug in 1.9 for x, the y value is 1 over negative 0.1, which is negative 10. That's going to be a little bit difficult to graph, but we get an idea about what's happening there. The y values are approaching negative infinite values. Let's graph a couple more points, and this time to the right of x equals 2. So 2.1, if I'm going to forego plugging in that value, but we're going to get a y value of 10 at 2.5 we'll get a y value of 2. So we're, we're going to get the idea that 
the graph is approaching a positive infinite value as x approaches 2 from the left. Plugging in a couple more values, if x equals 3, y is equal to 1. Oops, and I've graphed that last part incorrectly. Let me, let me fix that. Those values should have been to the right of 2. And then if x is equal to 4, then y is equal to 1 half. And you get an idea about what the graph is doing on the right side. So our graph has what is called a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And that's what we call an infinite discontinuity. So on what intervals is g of x continuous? It's continuous everywhere but x equals 2. So we can put that in interval notation in the following way. It's continuous from negative infinity to 2 and on the interval from 2 to infinity but not inclusive at 2. The discontinuity at x equals 2 is an infinite discontinuity. And let's attempt to say something about that using limits as our justification. And that is because the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x is equal to negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x is positive infinity. So because we've got infinite values for the limits, that means that the function has an infinite discontinuity. All right, let's check out another function, h of x. This one's a piecewise function. h of x is equal to x plus 3 if x is less than or equal to 1. So let's graph that first part of the function. That's going to be a line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 3. And then the second part of the function is x minus 2 squared if x is greater than 1. So if x were allowed to be 1, the value of the function would be 1 at that point. So we'll start with an open circle there. If x is 2, the y value is 0 and so on. We can graph some more y values, but we're going to get a parabola for that second part of the function. This function is continuous pretty much everywhere except for x equals 1, that breakpoint in the uh, piecewise function. So on what intervals is it continuous? This one will be continuous from negative infinity to positive 1, but inclusive at positive 1, because remember, that endpoint is included in the first part of the function, and it's also continuous on the interval from 1 to infinity. Even though that includes every x value for the function, there are two separate intervals, and so the function's not continuous all the way through from negative infinity to positive infinity. So now classifying the discontinuities, there is a a jump discontinuity at x equals 1. And now let's justify that with limits. So what we can say about the limits is that they are different from the right and the left. So limit as x approaches 1 from the left of h of x is 4 and limit as x approaches 1 from the right of h of x is 1 so limit as x approaches 1 from the left of h of x is not equal to limit 
as x approaches 1 from the right of h of x. Let's graph one more piecewise function. This one is p of x is equal to x plus 1 if x is not equal to 1, and 3 if x is equal to 1. So basically, we're going to graph the, uh, the line y equals x plus 1, except we'll have an open circle at the point where x is equal to 1. And then we'll put a dot on the graph where y is equal to 3. So this is continuous everywhere but x equals 1. So we can say it's continuous from negative infinity to positive 1, and also on the interval from 1 to infinity. This is a removable discontinuity. And that's at x equals 1. The reason for this is even though the limit as x approaches 1 of p of x exists, it's 2, and even though p of 1 exists, it's 3, those two things are not equal to each other. So limit as x approaches 1 of p of x is not equal to p of 1. Now let's use a table of values to sketch a rational function, that is, one that's in fraction form. So I'm just going to plug in some various x values. Um, let's go ahead and plug in maybe negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's just use those and see what happens. If we plug in negative 2, we get 4 minus 1 on the top and negative 2 minus 1 on the bottom. That's going to give us 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. If we plug in negative 1, we get 1 minus 1 on the top over, I'm sorry, we, yeah, we get 1 minus 1 on the top over negative 1 minus 1 on the bottom. So that's going to be 0 over negative 2, which is 0. If we plug in 0, we get 0 minus 1 on the top, 0 minus 1 on the bottom. That's equal to positive 1. If we plug in 1, we get 1 minus 1 on the top and 1 minus 1 on the bottom. That's 0 over 0, which is undefined, since we can't divide by 0. Let's try plugging in 2. 2 will give us a y value of 4 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, which is 3 over 1, or 3. And lastly, plugging in 3 gives us 9 minus 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 8 over 2, or 4. So now plotting those points, negative 2 comma negative 1, negative 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1, there's a point missing at x equals 1. At x equals 2, the y value is 3. At x equals 3, the y value is 4. By this point, you should be getting the impression that this is just a straight line. But there's one point missing from the graph, and that one point is at the point 1, 2. So it appears that this is the graph of y equals x plus 1. Now, how is that possible? Actually, f of x is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And you can see that that rational expression reduces to x plus 1. But it only reduces to x plus 1 if x is not equal to 1. So we could actually write this in piecewise form. f of x is equal to x plus 1 for x not equal to 1, and undefined for x equal to 1. It would have been simpler to graph this 
had we just reduced the fraction and written it in piecewise form to begin with. All right, one more example where we're going to graph a couple of functions and identify the removable and non-removable discontinuities. So in example 5a, we have g of x equals 6x over x squared plus 2x. Let's not make the same mistake that we made the last time, and let's go ahead and reduce this fraction first and write it in piecewise form. So what you'll notice about this one is that the denominator factors into x times x plus 2. That means that we can cancel the factors of x in the numerator and denominator, and this will reduce to 6 over x plus 2, provided that x is not the value that would have made the original function undefined. What value is that? That would have been 0, which would make the two factors that we canceled equal to 0. So if we, whoops, if we write that in piecewise form, our g of x is going to be equal to six over x plus two if x is not equal to zero and undefined if x is equal to zero. All right, let's uh, do a quick sketch of this graph. Is there another value of x for which g of x is undefined? Yes, that's x equals negative 2. That one's going to represent an infinite discontinuity. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 2. We can plug in some additional values to graph some more points. For instance, if we plug in x equals negative 1, then we're going to get uh, 6 as our y value. And if we plug in 0, we're going to get 3 as our y value. If we plug in 1, we're going to get 2 as our y value. This gives you a pretty good idea about what this graph looks like. What you'll notice is if you plug in increasingly large values of x, the y values get very close to 0. We can do the same thing on the other side of negative 2. At negative 3, for instance, the y value will be negative 6. At negative 4, the y value will be negative 3. And at negative 5, the y value will be negative 2. And that gives you a pretty good idea about what that graph looks like. All right, we'll graph one more function that's in rational form. This function is x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. What you'll notice about this one is this one also factors right away into x minus 2 times x minus 1 in the numerator over x minus 1 in the denominator. Cancel those common factors. So h of x can be written in piecewise form as the function x minus 2 if x is not equal to 1. Why? Because if x were equal to 1 in the original function, the value of h of 1 would have been 0 over 0, which is undefined. So what we need to say is h of x is undefined if x is equal to 1. That's going to make it much easier to graph. So all we have to do is really to graph y equals x minus 2. Except for we have a hole in the graph, or an open circle, when x would be equal to 1. And the function would be undefined there. So this one is going to have a removable discontinuity at x equals 1. And that will be it for today's lesson.